Today I'd like to tell you about my very first exposure to pornography. Is that an awkward way to start? Because it feels awkward to me. Like, are we gonna go there today? And yes, we are. I'll tell you about my very first exposure to pornography. If um, those of you, maybe you're about my age, you realize that when we were growing up, you didn't have the easy access to porn that so many people have today on mobile devices and such. Uh, for my age, you kinda had to almost like stumble upon a discarded magazine or have a friend who had a dad that had a secret stash. <laughs> I had a friend named Stephen who discovered his dad's secret stash and Stephen came to school to tell me, oh my gosh, you're not gonna believe what I've found. Well, you wanna come to my house to look at it? That was the day, I hate to admit it, but I did not walk home from school, but I ran home from school to Stephen's house to see what he had found. And I remember very clearly, even though it was decades ago, my first exposure to porn. I remember looking going, oh, so that's what those are. And I felt this rush of excitement, this thrill, this adrenaline hit, this buzz. I didn't wanna feel that way. It wasn't premeditated, I didn't choose it, but that's what I felt. Then it was followed by this very real sense of guilt and shame, like I'd done something wrong, which was only amplified when I came home and my mom was waiting for me at home and said, hi, my little sugar sweetheart, I love you so much. I, thought, I didn't tell her, but I thought, mom, I'm going to hell. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm going to hell. And that was my first exposure to porn when I was maybe 10 or 11 years of age. And it started a war in my mind of desiring to see something that was thrilling and exciting and yet feeling incredibly guilty. I'm talking to warriors today. And the good news is that you have the heart of a warrior with a kingdom to advance and someone to protect and a battle to win. And yet you have to understand though, warriors, that you have a very real spiritual enemy and his goal is to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to distract you disengage you, discourage you, take you out of the war because a distracted warrior is always a dangerous warrior. And one of the most common ways that our enemy will attack warriors is with a battle in the mind of lust that's often triggered through pornography. And that's why today's title is this, Your Porn Battle Plan. What's your plan? Because every warrior goes into war with a plan for victory. The reality is, in all my years of pastoring great people, I've never ever met a warrior who said, my goal is to abandon my post. My goal is to become a slave to lustful images. My goal is to wreck my life, lose the faith of the people that I love, hurt those who've trusted me, betray my spouse, Shame, my children. My goal is to be stripped of all spiritual confidence, to live in a sense of shame. My goal is to take everything that I value so much and trade it for momentary selfish lust. No warrior has ever said that. And yet there are very good people who actually love God and do that all the time. In fact, just a little question. Um, Let's talk about Christian men and Christian women. What percentage of Christian men and Christian women do you think view porn monthly? We're not talking about like three or four or five times a day, not like I'm, you know, someone who's really, really um, ragingly addicted, but we're talking about someone that might really love God and go two or three weeks and then like stumble upon something and look for a few minutes and then, oh, I shouldn't have done that, and then go a little while and then look again. What percentage of Christian men and Christian women, would you guess, would battle with porn? The answer is, according to studies, 64% of Christian men and 15% of Christian women will view porn monthly or more. So, admittedly, from the statistics, we know that men are generally more vulnerable to this, 
But the sad thing is women are becoming increasingly vulnerable, often for a different reason, based on my research and pastoral experience, it's often a girl who feels curious, feels like she wants to learn something, doesn't wanna be left out, and then doesn't realize that she can become addicted very easily as well. Those of you who are between the, year, the years 18 and 30, raise your hands. 18 to 30 year olds, raise your hands. Um, unfortunately, in your age range, the statistic goes up. About 79% of those your age who are men, even Christian men, will look at porn monthly or so. What do we realize? That we need a battle plan against the schemes of our enemy in order to win this victory so we can fight the battles that God has called us to fight. Today, we're gonna look at a guy that was an amazing warrior. He was a man after God's own heart. What's interesting about this guy is there were 929 verses about this warrior. The verses told us that he was a poet, he was a musician, he was a worshiper, he wrote about half of the Psalms, he was an amazing king, a fantastic leader in so many ways. He was a brilliant and brave warrior. And yet, with all these amazing qualities, this man is often remembered by something that is described in three out of 929 verses in the Bible. 929. And he's often remembered by what happened in three of them. I'll show you the first verse to introduce the context of this story, and then there's three verses for which King David, a great warrior, a man after God's own heart, is often remembered. Scripture says this, 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse one. In the spring, everybody say, in the spring. In the spring. in the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with all the king's men and the whole Israelite army, they destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah, but David remained in Jerusalem. In the spring, when the king David should have been at war, he stayed back at home. Then here are the three verses that describe the tragedy. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around the roof of the palace. From the roof he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. And David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, this woman, she is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came back and he slept with her. If you know the rest of the story, she got pregnant. David made a series of compounding bad decisions and that was the beginning of indescribable pain for King David and for so many others. A man after God's own heart, and he's often remembered by something described in three verses in the Bible. What happened? Essentially, if we're gonna describe and define as clearly as we can, what happened in his life? The same thing that happens in the lives of so many warriors. The first thing is, we notice David wasn't where he was supposed to be, so he saw something he wasn't supposed to see, then he did something he wasn't supposed to do, and that cost so many people who ended up losing so many things that they weren't supposed to lose. And it all started when he wasn't where he was supposed to be. At the king, in spring, when kings go off to war, David should have been at war, but instead he was at home. When do so many of us get messed up? It's when we're not engaged in the battles that we're supposed to fight. You're warriors. Every single one of you, male and female warriors, you've got someone to protect. You've got a kingdom to advance. You've got a battle to win. But when we're disengaged from our God-given calling, so often we're vulnerable to the selfish temptations of lust. David should have been leading the charge. He should have been rallying the troops, but he was disengaged, and that's the very reason so many of us are losing this battle. What do I know about you? My guess is, again, based on almost three decades of experience, uh, talking to people about this subject and many more, I'm gonna tell you what's very likely some version of your story. It won't be exactly right, but almost all of you will have some version of this story 
where many of the details would apply to you. There was a time at some point that you were very likely exposed to something sexually impure. It might have been pornography, like me in the fifth grade. It might have been worse than pornography when someone that you loved and trusted took advantage of you and molested you, betraying your innocence. It might have been that you were on a date with somebody and she smelled good and he, he was a smooth talker and it went from a little kissy, 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 blah, 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 to suddenly clothes were coming off and the next thing you know, you ended up doing something that you weren't planning on doing. What you didn't realize at that moment is you actually were wounded. You were wounded. You, you were hurt, you were injured. You, you were emotionally wounded. You were mentally wounded. You were spiritually wounded. It's a little bit like a computer virus. If a computer gets a virus, that virus then infects the rest of the computer. What happens is now that you have this wound, you didn't look at the gift of sex that God created in his holiness and beauty for marriage the same way. Because now you were injured and your thought life is slightly corrupted. You lost a little bit of your innocence and there's a war going on because there's a part of you that likes the thrill of the sexual, whatever it is, the, the porn, the masturbation, the, the fooling around, the whatever it is, because there is a buzz and there's a thrill and there's a feel good and there's a dopamine release and then it's often followed by this shame and this guilt and maybe even this self-disgust. And so you might have been embarrassed because you didn't know who to tell and so you kept it to yourself. The only problem is that sin grows best in the dark. So maybe you started justifying it saying it's not that bad, it's not that big of a deal. And, and then if you're a Christian, you might have prayed, God, take this desire away, take this desire away. But the desire didn't go away. Yeah. And so you prayed some more and you made promises, I won't do it again, I won't do it again, and you didn't for three whole days, or three weeks, or three months, or maybe even three years, you had periods of what we might call sexual sobriety until you tripped up and did something you shouldn't do, no, and you fell into sexual binges, kind of like when you eat one piece and say, well, now I might as well eat the whole thing. And so you hoped that, hey, when I get married one day, then everything will fix itself. Then we'll get to be together seven, eight times a week. <laughs> All my problems are gonna go away. And then you got married, and your problem didn't go away. Because you thought you were dealing with a lust issue, but it wasn't just a lust issue, you were dealing with a wound that has not healed. David wasn't where he was supposed to be. He saw something he wasn't supposed to see. He did something he wasn't supposed to do. He was vulnerable just like so many of us are vulnerable. When are warriors vulnerable? I'll show you a couple of times from this story and from scripture. We as warriors, we're vulnerable whenever we're overly confident. Those of you who think, I don't need this, this is silly, is any of it, you might be the most vulnerable when you're overly confident. Imagine King David saying, hey, it's springtime, I know I should be at war, but Joab, he's one of my best commanders, we've got more troops, they don't need me, I'll just stay back. He was overly confident. The Apostle Paul said this, he said in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12, if you think you're standing firm, you don't have a problem, you're never gonna be vulnerable, he says, be careful that you don't fall. Don't be overly confident. I used to be overly confident at times until God really did a miracle. It's hard to describe, but when I was 27 years of age or so, right before starting the church, I really wanted to be clean from this type of temptation. And I, I prayed, God, in heaven, do a miracle. I pray I would never, ever have a lustful thought again. And as hard as it is to describe at the age of 27, God cleansed my mind, and to this day, I have never had a single impure thought. I just made that up, that didn't happen. <laughs> like, oh, really, pastor, can we believe you? Like, no, that was a joke, okay. No, 
No. I am always, listen to me, I am always potentially vulnerable. You, Pastor Craig? Yes. The problem with Pastor Craig, he's still Pastor Man Craig. I tried to cast the man out of me and he just don't, he won't go away. I'm always potentially vulnerable. And that's why as a warrior, I've gotta be honest and I gotta be wise. When I'm going into battle, I've gotta know that my enemy is gonna set some landmines for me. I've gotta be honest about where I'm most vulnerable and wise enough to stay away from those things. So what you wanna do is you wanna be very wise about what it is that triggers you. What, what is it that you find yourself in real trouble along the way? Is it for you when you're like, scrolling on social media, and then you know he's hot or she's in a bikini, and the next thing you know you're in trouble? Or is it when you're playing computer games late at night and your, your spouse is asleep? Or is it when you're traveling on business and you have a couple of drinks, and the next thing you know you're vulnerable? Or when you're in the hotel room looking through the TV stations, and you're like, there's that? Or when you're with your girlfriend watching Netflix and you're in shorts and you got hair on your legs and she's in shorts and her legs are smooth and when smooth hits hair or something happens, you know, and the next thing you know, you're in trouble. <laughs> hey, if it's not awkward yet, just hang with me, baby, because we're going there today. Everybody all right today? Just breathe in, everybody breathe in. Just breathe in, one, two, three. <laughs> Breathe out, okay, we're still alive, we're still alive. <laughs> Female warriors, is it when you're reading a romance novel about that fictional guy that doesn't exist anywhere? <laughs> and you compare him to your really, very real dud at home, you know? <laughs> is it when you're reading the article that says 15 ways to drive him wild in bed? <laughs> and suddenly you start to go somewhere in your mind? What is it that triggers you? Warriors, you have to understand that you are only as strong as you are honest. You're only as strong as you are honest. You have to be honest. What I wanna do in my own life, knowing that I'm a warrior with a mission from my God, I wanna acknowledge that my enemy will try to stop me and disengage me from the battle. And so I'm gonna put some safeguards in my life as a part of my battle plan so I will not be as vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. So some things I do, this is just common sense, to honor my bride, Amy, and to honor my God and my pastoral calling. I'm not gonna be alone with women in any context. We're not talking in my office, you're not getting in my car, and we're driving to a restaurant so we can sit across from each other and have intimate talk. I know in the business world that's kinda common and whatever, like maybe the business world needs to grow some brains and recognize there's just no reason for that, okay? Sorry if that offends you. Uh, for me, I know that I could be potentially vulnerable to look at things online that I shouldn't look at. So I've got my iPad, I've got a mobile device, and I've got my computer, and I call them locked down. They're locked down. To the best of my ability, I have made it so that I can't access something that I shouldn't look at. So on my mobile device and my iPad, I can't download apps. I just can't, someone else has to put in a code, so I can't download an app where I might look at something that's inappropriate. My social media, there's like five or six people that have the codes to my, my passwords, all my passwords. I've got adult content blocked, so I can't erase anything, and if I try to book a massage, it won't let me even do that. I can't do lots of things, can't even order a swimsuit, and stuff like that, but anyway, there's ways around to someone else can order my swimsuit. My computer, everything is tracked, so what I've done is I put up safeguards and you're like, Pastor Craig, are you like that weak and that vulnerable? And the answer is no, not normally, not most of the time. But you never know, six months from now, when I'm in a bad place emotionally or mentally or spiritually, I'm traveling somewhere and late at night, you never know. So why in the world would I resist a temptation in the future that I have the power to eliminate today? I'm a warrior. I've got a battle plan. Why would I wait to fight off something later on if I have the power to eliminate that battle 
today. Come on, warriors. Use your brain. We don't run into battle without a plan. A warrior is vulnerable when we're overly confident. Secondly, we're vulnerable whenever we feel entitled. Think about King David. Can you imagine him feeling entitled? I am the king, and this is a very complicated job. I've got so much weight upon me. I'm working hard, and my wives, he had multiple ones, like, isn't one enough, Mr. David? But anyway, my wives aren't meeting my needs, and so I, I deserve a little something, something on the side. I'm going to justify this, I feel entitled. For you, it might be like, you're not married, and all your friends are playing chitty chitty bang bang, right? They're hooking up, and so you're saying, hey, I'm not doing that, man. And so, since I'm not doing that, this is just my one little thing. I just kinda look at this, I just kinda, you know, this is, this is my release, it's not really that big of a deal. I could be doing so much worse, and so you justify it. Or you might be married to a guy who doesn't really engage with you emotionally, so you justify what you do. Or your wife may not be meeting your needs and you're a man with your needs, so you justify getting your needs met in some inappropriate way. David decided to go up to the top of the palace. It would not have been unusual for a woman to take a bath, but you can almost see his line of thinking, I think I'll go up and get some night air and just look around and see if I see anything. And he did. He saw Bathsheba. Just seeing someone attractive is not a sin, but he didn't just see, he looked intently. And the reason I know that is because the Hebrew word translated as saw, he saw her bathing, is the word ra'ah, and ra'ah doesn't mean like look and look away, ra'ah means to go, ooh, it means to stare intently. I pronounce ra'ah like this, ra'ah, that's what he did. You've seen some people raw before, right? That's what he did. And you may say, that's not that big a deal. He's just looking, he was just looking, he's not touching. He saw something he wasn't supposed to see, which led him to do something he wasn't supposed to do. Jesus was crazy passionate about the subject of purity. It starts with the eyes. Jesus said this, sounds crazy, but he said, if you look lustfully at a person, you've already committed adultery in your heart. He said, if your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. Dear God, was he being literal. I hope not. Can you imagine you walk into work? You see another guy, he's got a patch on an eye. <laughs> and so do you. You're like, Christian? Yeah, Christian, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what he's saying is, Take this seriously, warriors. This can sideline you. It changes the way you think. It distorts what's real. It poisons what's pure. It objectifies people. It dishonors God. And it robs you of what you really, really want, which is intimacy, not just sexually, but relationally and spiritually as well. We don't just fight sexual temptation. You read all these verses about fight temptation, fight temptation, you, you fight temptation. When you read about sexual temptation, the Bible says flee. Flee, don't fight, flee. Okay, if you run into a bear, my recommendation is you run. You're like, hey, I've been, I've been doing kickboxing lessons, want some of me? No, 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 no. No, that's the way sexual temptation is, okay? You don't fight it. You run, Forrest, you run. You, 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 get, you get out of there. He wasn't supposed to be where he was, saw something he wasn't supposed to see. If you feel the weight of this right now, a little heaviness, and you're thinking, I should have skipped church today. <laughs> and the little voice is saying, don't let anybody know. Don't tell anybody. What I wanna say to you is this especially the men. Why are you talking to the men? Because I can, because I want to. Come on, men, be men of honor. Be men of integrity. Come on, ladies, let's fight for purity. Let's honor God in all that we do. Crave, crave the freedom. Aren't you tired of covering your tracks and wondering, when are they gonna find out? 
How have I gone this long without anybody knowing? Aren't you, aren't you tired of the emotional distance that it creates? Aren't you tired of the spiritual drag that you feel? You wanna represent God, but you just feel completely insecure because there's this weight holding you back. Eventually, David got there. Took another man, a prophet, getting up in his business. And finally, David confessed. Scripture says this, Psalm 32, verse five. David says, finally. Finally, I confessed my sins to you, God. I confessed. And I stopped trying to hide my guilt. And I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to God. And what did God do? He said, and you, O oh God, you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. I hope somebody will give praise to our good God for his grace and his mercy. In other words, no matter how trapped you feel, no matter how dark it is, our God is there for you. There's always hope. There's always potential for healing in Christ. Come on, warriors. Let's fight. Let's fight like people of God. Let's not surrender and just justify this. Let's have a plan. We are Warriors, what is your plan? Very simply, five things. It's simple. And some of you, you will do this and you will find victory. The first thing we do, warriors, is we confess to God. And the good news is, Scripture says, our God, he is faithful and just to forgive us and purify us from all of our sins. That's how good our God is. When you confess, God hears your confession and he forgives your sins. The second thing we do, number one, we confess to God. The second thing, we confess to the right people. We confess to the right people. James said this, he said, confess your sins one to another and pray for each other that you might be healed. Do you see the difference? We confess to God for forgiveness, but we confess to people for healing. Come on, warriors. How long have you been battling this? If you're not winning, it's because you need the right people around you. We were not designed to fight alone. I need warriors in the battle with me. That's why we're in life groups. That's why iron sharpens iron. That's why I don't just need my bride, but I need a few men that can kick my butt. And it generally takes more than one, to be quite honest. I need someone who can call me on it and confront me, you confess to the right people. Third thing you do is you remove the triggers. Don't be stupid, come on, don't be stupid. If you continue to lose on the same path, get off the path. If I'm up into David's business, David, no night strolls on the rooftop. Remove the triggers. Number four, get the necessary help, whatever it is, come on. Make the phone call, look them up online, get counseling for you, for your marriage. Listen, you gotta go to rehab, let's get it done. Come on, let's get it done. Number five, you let the goodness of our God heal your wound. Will this be an easy battle to win? No. You may fight this battle your whole life. But with Christ, there is freedom. With Christ, there is joy. With Christ, there is real sexual intimacy in a marriage that honors God. In Christ, there's emotional intimacy, both with your spouse and with your Father in heaven. With Christ, there is healing. Female warriors. If you got a battle with porn, let's call it what it is. Let's work your battle plan. But I wanna speak directly to the female warriors just for a moment from the perspective of my male warrior friends. I would love to invite you ladies into the fight to fight with us and occasionally on our behalf because we need your help. And here's what's gonna happen. Somewhere, somehow, there might be a confession, a husband to a wife, a wife to a husband, a friend to a friend. And ladies, what I know about you is if there's an important man in your life who says, I've sinned in this way, your first reaction will be anger, disgust, 
fury, rage. You might feel like insecure, am I not enough? How could you do that to me? And every single one of those feelings are completely justified. No doubt about it. But I pray you can deal with those feelings. And on the other side of those feelings, you can look across at a warrior who's not just some kind of jerk, loser, pervert, but a warrior who's been wounded and loves you enough to ask you for help. Because listen, we need each other. I don't fight for purity alone. Warriors, you're not weak. You're not a victim. You don't take shortcuts. You deny yourself. You make sacrifices. You're a warrior. You never, ever surrender. Your mind will always be a battlefield, but you are its commander. You are not its slave. Who are you? Warriors, you're an overcomer. By the blood of the lamb, and by the words of your testimony in the power of Christ. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus because the very same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, it dwells inside of you. Warriors, the enemy isn't attacking you because you're weak. The enemy is attacking you because you are a warrior. You have someone to protect. You have a kingdom to advance and you have a battle to win. You may fail, yes, you may fall, yes, you may stumble, but with Christ, you rise to fight again because you are a warrior, and a warrior may not win every battle, but a warrior never stops fighting. And when you continue to fight with the people of God, you will see the victory of Christ because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So Father, we ask, in the name of your son, Jesus, to help us do battle together, protecting God the wound that you would heal it, and we would honor you in purity, fighting the battles you've called us to fight. As you're praying today at all of our churches, I wonder how many warriors, male, female, young and old, those of you who say, I wanna honor God with a life of purity in Christ, I hope it's everybody. Would you lift up your hands right now, just lift them up all over the place. God, I thank you for warriors who will have a battle plan, who will never ever overestimate their strength nor underestimate the enemy, but recognize we have an enemy who devises schemes to trick us, trap us, distract us, destroy us. So therefore, God, we will honor you, searching your heart, your word, confessing our sins to you, to the right people in our life groups, in our, in our accountability relationships, getting the help that we need with wisdom, removing whatever temptation might trap us. And God, believing in faith that today is the beginning of healing, that you would start to heal these sexual wounds, God, that we could live for you in purity, with honor and in intimacy and in strength to fight the battles you called us to fight. Help us heal together, God, by the power of your risen son, Jesus. As you keep praying today at all of our churches, nobody looking around, there are those of you, you're gonna recognize you need spiritual help. You need direction. I remember feeling just this, this, this deep sense of shame years ago trying so hard to be good enough for God, and, and, and no matter how hard I tried, I always ended up doing the wrong thing. And I had to come to recognize that I couldn't be good enough on my own. No matter what, whether this is an issue for you or something else, none of us can be good enough on our own. And the good news is that our God is so loving and so full of mercy that he didn't leave us on our own, but he became one of us in the person of his son, Jesus, who was without sin, the greatest warrior in the history of the world, gave his life, died, and rose again, so that anyone who calls on that name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, anyone who calls on his name, would be saved, forgiven, transformed, not just saved from your sins, but saved for a life of purpose, 
to battle and engage in the spiritual battles that matter to the heart of God, advancing his kingdom. At all of our churches, there are those of you, you're tired of being ashamed, you're tired of the weight of your guilt, you're tired of living a life without purpose, and you recognize you're here today because there's a battle going on for you. The forces of darkness against the kingdom of light, and all you need to do is say, yes, Jesus, I'm on your side. I turn from my sins, I give my life to you. All of our churches, those who say, yes, I want your grace, I want your forgiveness, I want your, your power. Jesus, I give my life to you. That's your prayer. Lift your hands high now all over the place and say yes. Up here, God bless you. Right back over here. Here, both of you. Praise God for you guys. Others of you today. Right back over here, sir. A warrior born into the kingdom. Right here, others. My gosh, somebody give God some praise. Church online, you click right below me. Both of you right back over here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. If you would today, all of our churches, just stand to your feet. You're engaged and ready for battle, stand to your feet, and let's pray together with those being born into God's army. Pray, Heavenly Father, forgive all my sins. Jesus, save me, set me free. Fill me with your spirit so I could do your work, so I could live in your will, so I could show your love. My life is not my own. I give it all to you. Thank you for life in Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Could somebody get a little loud, give a little victory roar, give our God praise for new life in Christ. Hey, thanks for joining us here at Life Church. You know, as a church, it's always our heart to see you continue to grow in your relationship with Christ. We have a great resource to help you do that. It's called life.church slash next. There you can find all kinds of resources to help you continue to grow in your relationship with Christ. And we'd love for you to subscribe and be a part of our online community. Again, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.